The Bills took a hard loss on Monday against the Jets. But fans of the team have an even bigger issue as allegations of racial discrimination have surfaced by the team's owner, Terry Pagula, who also owns the NHL team, the Buffalo Sabres. Now, Buffalo News reported on this, they wrote that Buffalo Bills co-owner Terry Pagula criticized the rise in National Football League players protests against racial injustice by saying unhappy black players should go back to Africa and see how bad it is according to a discrimination lawsuit filed Tuesday against the league. Continues on, the remarks were included in a complaint filed against the NFL and NFL media in federal court by Jim Trotter, a former NFL media reporter who claims he was terminated after speaking out on the need to improve diversity and inclusion within the league. Trotter did not hear the alleged Pagula remark firsthand, but reported the account of someone else who did. Now Trotter said he first learned of Pagula's comment when another NFL media reporter mentioned it on a company wide Zoom call in September 2020. Which means that other people at the company were aware that this happened, not just Trotter and not just the individual who heard it firsthand. Now. The dinner where the remark allegedly took place was in 2018 and no one complained about the purported racist remark until the 2020 NFL media video call and NFL source said. We have this statement from Terry Pagula. which reads, the statement attributed to me and Mr. Trotter's complaint is absolutely false. I'm horrified that anyone would connect me to an allegation of this kind. Racism has no place in our society and I am personally disgusted that my name is associated with this complaint. Now, according to the lawsuit, it wasn't just the Bills owner who is guilty of this. Let's get into this reporting from ESPN News Services. The lawsuit also mentions Dallas Cowboys owner Jerry Jones, not a surprise there, who allegedly told Trotter in 2020 that if blacks feel some kind of way, they should buy their own team and hire who they want to hire. Jones's comment allegedly was made during a conversation with Cowboys executive Will McClay, who is black, and Trotter about why teams have so few black decision makers, according to the lawsuit. Trotter also described the exchange as rather contentious, said that Jones ultimately suggested that he and Trotter should agree to disagree about the NFL's issues with race. Jones said in a statement that the lawsuit's representation of his exchange with Trotter is, as he said, simply not accurate. The NFL issued a statement disputing Trotter's allegations against them. It says, we share Jim Trotter's passion for quality journalism created in and supported by a diverse and inclusive environment. We take his concerns seriously, but strongly dispute his specific allegations, particularly those made against his dedicated colleagues at NFL media. And Sharon, I think the thing that struck me the most about this story is how little attention it's gotten. I mean, yeah. these allegations were made and I, you know, we haven't seen much reporting on it by by big outlets. I mean, they're pretty, you know, shocking allegations in in a league that has been, you know, it has a history of racism, has a continued history of racism, you know, against its, the treatment of its black players. And when you look at the, you know, demographics of the owners of these teams, it does not come <laughs> in any way close to the diversity that we see amongst the players. And you know, I'm not a fan of. American football. I'm I'm a soccer fan, and you know when these sorts of allegations come out in you know when for the clubs in soccer in Europe, it's a very different story because in those countries you can be charged with a crime for making these kinds of statements. So you know I'm just a little surprised at like the lack of severity of you know the, the 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 treatment of these allegations which i think are very serious it just seems like it's not getting anywhere close to the attention that it should be receiving i i think you're exactly right and i think it's perhaps twofold well i know it is first of all a lot in the media mainstream are afraid of the nfl okay the wide reach the tentacles it's just beyond and no one wants to stand up to them. The other part of that, I think, is apathy on the part of white journalists who don't necessarily care. They don't care, actually, about what's happening um, enough to put their even toe in the water here. That's what's really going on. This is the same NFL who has, you know, who believes that a hostage video. 
by NFL, you know, Roger Goodell saying Black Lives Matter. I don't know who still was in there holding his feet to the fire because it looked like it was in someone's basement and he didn't want to do it, okay? But he did it and that's supposed to make everything great. When we know underneath the hood or really bubbling just below the surface is nothing short of racism, collusion, all of it. They've done all of it. It takes more than just Jerry Jones and a historic picture of him on the wrong side of history to prove what's really going on with these owners. The good ones are in cahoots too, otherwise it doesn't fly. And the fact that the owners are more outraged about allegations of racism against them than the actual racism <laughs> in the league, I think is very telling. I think that that's also a story of how so we see so many interactions where, you know, for a lot of white people, the worst thing that you can be called is racist. That yeah. is that they view it like, you know, it's worse than racism, and that's the reactions we see. And it's so false and it's so gross. And I mean, there's an investigation gross. currently about racist hiring practices in the NFL. Where's the outrage about that from these owners? I just don't see it. <laughs> Daniel Snyder's not even in the league anymore, but it, it's going to continue. And there's, of course, the issue of the journalists who don't want to cover it because they're afraid that they're not going to get access anymore and that they're not going to have good scoops or good stories if they go, you know, if they speak out too much about the league. And if you're willing to, you know, if you're willing to cape for the league instead of doing your journalistic, you know, actually doing your job as a journalist and covering this racism. I think that's a very sad state of affairs for journalism. It happens every day. I've broken stories, NFL, NBA, only to have personnel call up the outlet I was working for and try to get the stories killed. And if I worked for someone who lacked integrity, which might be synonymous with <laughs> some of these news companies, it, this story probably did get killed or watered down, or I was asked ridiculous questions when we've already talked about this, and you know it's sourced. It's perhaps sourced at the top. So this is just—it's a fake sports journalism in many ways. It's why I, I am sad to see real sports with Bryant Gumble come to an end. I think he's announcing that this is it because they ruffled feathers and they asked questions and they covered, you know, sexual assault and animal abuse and a lot of other things. And remember, Bryant Gumbel was doing the NFL and he criticized very pointedly, directly to camera. And suddenly he wasn't doing the NFL on the side anymore. But that's okay, that's what you have to do sometimes. It's just not enough people are willing to go there. Mm -hmm. And lastly, I just want to touch on the, you know, the idea that if black players want to feel represented by the league, they need to start their own team and they need to hire their own, uh, you know, leadership for their their have their own owner group for their their teams, which. I, I'm someone who follow. I mentioned earlier, I watch soccer, I watch women's soccer a lot. And it actually, something like that did happen with the NWSL. There was a systemic sexual abuse of the players by the managers, by the coaches, and a cover up by the owners. And so they brought the club Angel City FC together in LA, owned by majority women to try to fight against that. But that's a relatively, and it just shouldn't come to that. Is what my I'm I'm happy that they did that, but it should never come to that, right? The league should demand better. I mean, there should be more representation, especially in the NFL, where there is so many black players, and these owners are getting rich off of these black players, using them in advertising, having them. You know, sacrifice their bodies for the sport and for the the money going into these people's pockets, and the idea that you know we can't give a damn about their interests and what they have to say about racism in the league. If they want to see you know their interests represented, then they need someone. They need a black person to buy it. It really is showing <laughs> that they don't care about racism. <laughs> they don't care, and they're so far down the racist rabbit hole. That Jerry Jones, a man about the world, a billionaire, actually said that. He actually made that statement. Further proof that all the decisions made about players, black players, are made in a smoke filled room with white guys. White guys of a certain generation, white guys of generational wealth, white guys who haven't even had enough, even being around so many black players, okay? Who they seem to view more as cattle or property. I really do mean that. They view them in a way that we do 
own you. You should be grateful, you should shut up. When the players retire, they still call him Mr. Jones. <laughs> it's just a um, very Jim Crowish way of doing business, this transactional way that's anything but human. I think a lot of people push back against this, but there's a lot of comparisons to the way that black people are treated in sport. To the legacy of slavery, to, you know, as you mentioned, Jim Crow. And I, I think people are scared to hear that, especially white people, because they like to watch these athletes play on and Sunday. Rich. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, that's a very, that's a wonderful analogy because it is exactly like that. I mean, they are, they view these players as expendable. Once their bodies give out, they throw them away. They don't care about, we, you know, covered the story of the player who, I can't remember, I believe he had a heart attack on the field. And we highlighted the ways in which players who you know become disabled because of their careers aren't taken care of by the league afterwards, especially if they're you know not big name players. They become poor, any money they saved up goes out the window because it's costly to be disabled in this country. Well, remember to, these aren't guaranteed contracts. Does that not sound ridiculous? Of all the sports leagues, the most violent car crashes happen on repeat every Sunday and Monday nights too and Thursday nights now too. These are human car crashes. And then what the league says is once you are injured in our sponsored car crash, we're not even gonna protect you. We're gonna cancel your contract. We have the right to do that, you're done. And then when you apply for something, medical that should be should be furnished to you. Perhaps you did have too many head injuries. They tell black players things like, well, we have this special formula cuz you weren't as smart to begin with. So when we see what the range is of where you stand and sit today because of this alleged head injury, maybe you don't qualify cuz you weren't that smart to begin with. That's what the data shows us. It's insulting, it is slave like to put people through, you know, the combine and see how long their reach is. Do they check their teeth too to see, you know, their age? It's it's pathetic that we're not doing things a different way. And it's pathetic that I don't like to put things on players who just want to follow their dreams, but why there can't be a banding together to say you're not gonna do this, no matter if you prop Magic Johnson, who I have a lot of respect for who is now part owner of that team in Washington. He's the poster boy, but he's the only one. He's really gonna be the only one. We know Denver, There's when you talk about say, when you talk about who has the power here, it's not magic, it's not him. I'm hoping that we see some more bravery from journalists and willing to speak out instead of covering their own asses and their own, you know, access. That we see more people coming out and, and bringing attention to this. But we'll keep everybody updated. Hopefully, the story starts to get the attention that it absolutely deserves. Check out the Damage Report podcast each day, wherever you get your podcasts, whether Pocket Casts or Stitcher or iTunes. You can join me as I give you the news and stories you want, with a range of co hosts and interview guests jumping in on the fun each day. Again, that's the Damage Report, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you get them at iTunes, don't forget to rate and review. Sometimes I'll read them live on the show.